Hello, today we will be learning how to transform a given polynomial such that it preserves the transformation of roots. We will also be looking at the Vieta's formula and in the end we will also be doing a CMI entrance problem. So let's start. So transformation of polynomials. Suppose we are given a n degree polynomial p of x equals a n x to the power of n plus a n minus 1 x to the power of n, a n minus 1 plus dot 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 a 1 x plus a 1 naught. Here this is a real coefficient polynomial that is every a i is a real number. Let the roots of this polynomial including the complex roots the alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, dot 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 alpha n. As you know, a n degree polynomial will have n complex roots. Now, let f be an invertible complex function with alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, dot 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 alpha n in its domain. Question We want to find the corresponding transformation of p of x say uh, q of x such that q of x has f of alpha 1, f of alpha 2 and f of alpha n as its roots. So this seems to be a very important question of interest and will help us in many problems. So we need to know how to transform this given polynomial that is p of x into some other polynomial that is q of x which has f of alpha 1 f of alpha 2 dot 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 f of alpha n as its roots so let's do that so now i'm going to make a claim the claim is that required polynomial is actually p composed with f inverse remember we had a function f which we said is invertible in a certain domain of complex numbers which has all the roots in its domain and we are saying that this q which is the required transformation of p is actually p composed with f inverse so let's prove this now this seems like a bold assumption to make but you'll see why this work this isn't very hard to prove so remember, each of these alpha i for i belonging to the set of naturals from 1 to n is a root of p of x. But that basically means that p of alpha i is equal to 0 by the definition of alpha i being a root. Now, remember that we claimed q is equal to p composed with f inverse is our required transformation of p which has f of alpha i as its root so we are going to prove this and you'll see that this is not very hard to prove let's evaluate f of alpha i on q so q of f of alpha i will actually be equal to f p composed with f inverse evaluated at f of alpha i but this is just same as p evaluated as f inverse composed with f alpha i and now by the properties of inverses if you remember f inverse composed with f of x is equal to x and f composed with f inverse of x is also equal to x so we are going to be using this property and by this property this is just p evaluated at alpha i and remember alpha i was actually a root of this polynomial p hence p of alpha i is nothing but equal to 0 so this is actually equal to 0 which implies f of alpha i is indeed a root of q of x and hence 
we are done with our proof because we were able to successfully transform p of x into a q of x which has f of alpha i as its root for all i belonging to n. Now we will move on to the Vieta's formula and you will see that it is one of the most important formula which we use in polynomials. So let's proceed. Now that this is done and dusted, let's move on to the Vieta's formula. Let P of x be our polynomial a n x to the power n plus a n minus 1 x to the power of n, n minus 1 plus dot 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 a 1 x plus a naught. Now remember here we have assumed each of these a i is actually a complex number. So this result is going to be very general over both reals as well as with complex coefficients. Now this is a n degree polynomial which basically means that a n is not equal to 0 and let's assume that this has roots which is alpha 1 alpha 2 dot 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 alpha n and obviously since we are considering everything in the complex plane as well these roots may also be complex. Now the Vieta's formula actually states that for any integer between 0 and n the sum of the product of roots taken k at a time can be found by taking the ratio of the n minus k coefficient with the leading coefficient with appropriate sign. So for example here these summation have been indexed over k of the roots of this polynomial and these indices have to be one of the numbers between 1 and n and we are taking we are grouping these products k at a time and we are summing this over all these possible indices. Now I will demonstrate Vieta's formula in a small example for n equals 3 or for a cubic polynomial. So let's go to that. Now an example would help you understand Vieta's formula and it's important better. So consider this cubic polynomial that is p of x equals a3 x cubed plus a2 x squared plus a1 x plus a0. Let the roots of this polynomial be alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3. Now remember by Vieta's formula alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 is just sum of the roots taken one at a time. So here k is equal to 1 and n is equal to 3. So by Vieta's formula alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 will just be equal to minus 1 to the power 1. Here remember k is equal to 1 times the ratio of the n minus k coefficient with the leading coefficient that is a n minus k upon a n. Now remember n is equal to 3 and k equals 1 so n minus k is just a2 and n is just 3. So this becomes minus a2 upon a3. Now this is a very useful co uh, formula to relate the coefficients of the polynomial to the sum and products of the roots as well as the product of the roots taken together in groups. And you see we can also find what the value of this particular expression is. So here we have grouped two roots at a time and we have taken the sum of their products. So alpha 1 alpha 2 plus alpha 2 alpha 3 plus alpha 3 alpha 1 is actually equal to minus 1 to the power of k which is in this case 2 because we are grouping two roots at a time and taking their product and this is multiplied with the ratio a1 upon a3. a1 comes because n minus k is equal to 1 and n is just equal to 3. So this just becomes a1 by a3 because minus 1 to the power 2 is just 1. Now similarly we can also find what alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 is. Here we have grouped all the three roots together and hence k is equal to 3 and that means this product is actually equal to minus 1 to the power of 3 times a0 a3 which is minus 1 times a0 a3. 
a0 by a3 so this is what vieta's formula gives us and as you can see this is a result of immense importance and will help us solve many problems so let's move on to a direct application of this as well as the transformation of polynomials in a 2020 cmi entrance problem okay so let's get started with the problem so in this problem we have a polynomial p of x equals 10 x to the power 400 plus a x to the power 399 plus b x to the power 398 plus 3 x plus 15 where a and b are unknown real constants and we have been asked to find the sum of reciprocals of all 400 real and complex roots of p of x now remember there are multiple ways of doing this but i want to provide a elegant way by using transformation of polynomials and vieta's rule to give the solution so let's start now let's write down the polynomial first polynomial p of x is a degree 400 polynomial where two coefficients are unknown now you might wonder how will we use vieta's rule if two coefficients are unknown how do we conclude information regarding the roots of this polynomial if the coefficients are unknown but as you will see we won't really require these two coefficients in the end now remember we have been asked to find the sum of reciprocals of root so let's assume the roots to be alpha 1 alpha 2 dot 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 alpha 400 remember these roots are all the 400 roots of this 400 degree polynomial and this might be complex as well but it has also asked to find all the roots whether it be real or a complex root so we'll be considering everything now consider a function a complex function f of x equals 1 by x now this function is a function from the complex numbers excluding 0 to the complex numbers excluding 0 now as you might know the inverse of this function is actually the same that is 1 by x that's because f composed with f inverse of x is just f of 1 by x which is x and similarly f inverse of f is equal to f inverse of 1 by x which is again equal to x so these two functions are actually the same function but they are also inverses of each other now we'll actually try to find out a polynomial q of x which has roots 1 by alpha 1 1 by alpha 2 dot 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 1 by alpha 400 now this is same as finding the roots when the function f is applied to the roots of the polynomial p of x that is this is same as f of alpha 1 f of alpha 2 dot 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 f of alpha 400 now in order to do this if you remember we are going to transform the polynomial p of x into this polynomial q of x now how do we do that if you remember q is just equal to p composed with f inverse so we are going to apply that now q of x is equal to p of f inverse of x which is just equal to p of 1 by x as f inverse of x is just equal to 1 upon x and this is actually equal to 100 upon x to the power of 400 plus a upon x to the power of 399 plus b upon x to the power of 398 plus 
3 by x plus 15. Now, the roots of this equation when evaluated to 0 is actually 1 by alpha 1, comma 1 by alpha 2, dot dot dot, 1 by alpha 400 based on our proof of transformation of polynomials. But the roots of this equation evaluated to 0 is actually same as finding the roots of this polynomial when this equation is multiplied to x to the power 400. And this can happen because all of these roots have to be non-zero to make sense. So this just can be written as 100 plus a x plus b x squared plus 3x to the power of 399 plus 15x to the power of 400. Now, we have a new polynomial at our hand and this polynomial actually has the same root as this polynomial that is the inverses of the roots of the polynomials p of x. Now, if you remember, we needed to find 1 by alpha 1 plus 1 by alpha 2 plus dot 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 1 by alpha 400 and this is actually equal to minus 1 to the power of 1 times 3 by 15 by Vieta's rule because here k is equal to 1 and n is equal to 400. So a 400 minus 1 upon a 400 is just this coefficient which is the corresponding coefficient of x to the power of 399 and this coefficient which is the corresponding coefficient of x to the power 400 which is the leading coefficient. So this is just 3 by 15 and hence this becomes minus 1 by 5 and this my friends are the answer to this question. That's all for this.